All right, so uh, today we're going to be talking about simplifying fractions using the greatest common factor technique. Now, we've already had a video here about using the prime factorization technique, so if this doesn't suit your fancy, then go ahead and watch that video, and hopefully it makes a little bit more sense to you. In any case, why don't we go ahead and just jump straight into this. If you want to simplify fractions using the greatest common factor, you got to find the greatest common factor first, and then you're going to divide the numerator and denominator by that number. How do you find the GCF? Well, sometimes you just kind of know by looking at the numbers, but I got a slightly more organized way of doing this. We're going to make something called factor tables. To make a factor table, you put the number you're interested in at the top of the table. Going along the left side, you start putting down the numbers in order 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on and so forth. What you're going to do to fill in the right side of the table is to divide that top number by the number that you're on. If you can divide the number, then you put the quotient in the right-hand column, and if you can't, then you don't put the number at all. You'll see what this looks like. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at our first example here, which is asking us to simplify 12 sixteenths. We'll make a factor table for 12 and 16, and then we'll be looking for the biggest number that shows up in both tables. Whatever that number is, that's going to be our GCF. Let's take a look. To start my factor table for 12, I'm going to put 12 over a t table like so. Then in the left, I'm going to put numbers I can divide 12 by. 12 divided by 1 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then 12 divided by 3 is equal to 4. Now here's the thing. I could keep going with the 4 on the left-hand side of the table, but I'm going to have the pair 4, 3. See, here's the thing. I already got both of those numbers. Once you get a repeat on the left side, that means that you're going to essentially be doubling your efforts. So let's just stop here. We found all our factors for 12. Now we can do the same thing for 16. And we're going to put 16 over the t table like so, and then we'll put the numbers we can divide 16 by. 16 divided by 1 is 16. 16 divided by 2 is equal to 8, and then, oops, I can't divide 16 by 3, so I'm going to skip straight ahead to 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4. There's our repeat. Our table is done. We look between both tables and see that 4 is the biggest number that shows up in each table. That means that 4 is our GCF. So our final step here is to divide the numerator and denominator by the GCF that we found. So 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. 16 divided by 4 is equal to 4, which tells us the simplified version of 12 sixteenths is 3 fourths. Let's look at another one. If we want to simplify 7 28ths, we make the factor tree for 7 and for 28. 7 is really easy since it's prime. It's just 1 and 7. There's nothing else I could divide it by. 28 is going to be a little bit more involved, but not by much. Again, 28 over the t table. 28 divided by 1 is equal to 28. I can divide it by 2 because it's even. 28 divided by 2 is 14. Can't divide by 3, but I can divide it by 4. 28 divided by 4 is 7. And if I keep going here, I'm just going to get to my repeat 7. I look and I see that the biggest number in both tables is equal to 7. So I'm going to divide my current numerator and denominators by that GCF to get my simplified fraction. 7 divided by 7 and 28 divided by 7 give us 1 and 4 respectively. So 7 28 equals 1 fourth. All right, let's try one that's a lot more involved, shall we? In our last example here, we are asked to simplify 45 over 210. Both bigger numbers with a lot more factors, but hey, we could do this. Let's, let's give it a shot here. Set up the factor table for 45. 45 divided by 1 is 45. It's not even, so we can't divide by 2, but we can divide it by 3. 45 divided by 3 is 15. If it's not even, we can't divide it by 4. 45 divided by 5 is 9. Can't do 6, 7, or 8. This is it. This is the end of our table. So now we're going to do the same thing for 210. We put 210 over the t table here, and then we list all the things that we can divide by. 210 divided by 1 is 210. It's even, so we could divide it by 2. 210 divided by 2 is 105. Its digits add up to a multiple of 3, so we could divide it by 3. 210 divided by 3 is 70. Can't do 4, but since it ends in 0, we can divide by 5. 210 divided by 5 is 42. Look at this. It's going on and on. we got to extend our table here. We can divide by 6. 210 divided by 6 is 35. We can divide it by 7. 210 divided by 7 is 30. Can't do 8. Can't do 9. Got to go to 10. 210 divided by 10 is 21. And then oh, 14 times 15. I guess we got a little bit happy there at the end. We see that 15 is the biggest number that shows up in both 
tables, so that means that 15 is our GCF. To simplify our fraction here, we're going to divide our numerator and denominator by our GCF of 15, and that's going to get us to our final answer here of 3 over 14. There we go. So 45 over 210 is equal to 3 fourteenths. All right, so this one was obviously a lot more involved, but again, consider the fact that the numerator and denominator were bigger numbers, which means they're going to have a lot more factors compared to the other things that we were looking at so far today. The nice thing is that as long as we're able to do our division correctly in our factor tables, this is going to take us straight to the GCF, which is going to take us straight to the most simplified version of the fraction. Like I said before, this here, it's an option for us in the situations where we don't really know a lot about the factors of the numbers. What you're going to have to figure out for yourself is when and if you need to use this or even the prime factorization technique we used in the other video. But hey, at least you got options, right? All right. I got nothing else to say, so uh, I'm out of here. Later!